very much, uh, Mr. Chairperson, sir. I rise to speak on the Anti-Maritime Piracy Bill 2019. If I understand correctly, uh, the official degree. amendments which are sought to be moved by the government, you plan to amend the title of the bill to perhaps read uh, uh, Maritime uh, Anti-Piracy Bill 2019, which of course uh, would make it sound better. As uh, the minister was uh, explaining, Mr. Chairperson, that the bill was introduced in this house on the 9th of December 2019, was referred to the Standing Committee on 23rd December 2019. The Standing Committee reported back on the 11th of February 2021, and official amendments were proposed by the government on the 22nd of July 2022. This bill, uh, Mr. Chairperson, uh, provides us an opportunity <coughs> not only to discuss the legal architecture around, uh, or the need for a legal architecture around piracy, but more importantly also India's interests, India's strategic interests in the Northern Arabian Sea and the Western Indian Ocean, where uh, a majority of uh, India's trade uh, passes through. It's, uh, it would be a trite to say that uh, you know, ungoverned uh, spaces actually create the conditions for uh, pirates to operate. And unfortunately, since 2008-2009, uh, Somalia and uh, Yemen have been uh, in a rather disturbed state of uh, affairs. And so therefore, uh, the Gulf of Aden the North Arabian Sea, the coast of Somalia and Yemen have been uh, piracy prone now for almost uh, a decade and a half or not more. And for India, as the minister was correctly pointing out, that the sea lanes of commerce, uh, especially the ones which uh, transit through these seas and also the ones which then uh, transit from the Hormuz to the Malacca, really constitute uh, the lifeblood of our global trade. And uh, it was uh, in the year 2009 that when the problem of piracy was really at its zenith that a <coughs> combined task force was set up, Task Force 151, 152, and 153. They were established and they were given a mission mandate in order to combat uh, the, the problem of piracy. 34 nations, six countries uh, got together to patrol almost 8.3 million square kilometers of international waters. And uh, I must say that uh, this mission has been successful in mitigating the impact of piracy to a great extent. India, of course, at that point in time, chose not to associate itself with the uh, Task Force 151, 152, 153, which was operating out of the combined maritime headquarters in Bahrain, primarily because of the presence of Pakistan on these task forces. But I'm given to understand, I would be uh, very interested to know from the Honorable Minister that I believe India has changed its mind and now we have decided to associate ourselves uh, with these task forces. So it would be interesting to uh, really understand from the Minister as to why this change of heart and change of mind has really come about. However, uh, Mr. Chairperson, sir, something which is of extreme significance to our national security is the growing Chinese presence in these waters. China has operationalized its port in Djibouti. In fact, uh, a recent report which was given by the Department of Defense to the U.S. Congress on China's military power, very, very specifically flagged the question of, uh, of uh, China's naval presence, and especially that uh, the base in Djibouti would be able to host uh, Chinese aircraft carriers and uh, other uh, Chinese uh, PLA Navy uh, assets in this particular region in a rather, uh, a rather elevated or enhanced manner. Therefore, under those circumstances, uh, uh, more than piracy,
It is actually the Chinese naval presence in the Northern Arabian Sea and the Western Indian Ocean, which is going to become our foremost challenge. And therefore, I would like to ask, and interestingly, the Honorable Defense Minister is also here, and I had raised this in the consultative committee when we met in Mumbai just uh, a week before, that uh, perhaps India needs to really reconsider its forward-basing policy also, because you cannot have a secure Northern Arabian Sea and a Western Indian Ocean if you do not have bases uh, to be able to forward deploy. And China has very, very successfully leveraged its uh, debt diplomacy in order to expand its basing presence across the, around the rim of Africa. So they are exploring bases in Madagascar in addition to various other countries. And I would like to ask the Honorable Minister, uh, India had been uh, in talks with Mauritius. I think we were doing something on the Agliga Islands. We were also doing something with Seychelles on the Assumption Islands. So therefore, it would be interesting uh, if the minister could throw light as to what really would, uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the light of the changed circumstances, you know, the, the geopolitical circumstances, not only in the Northern Arabian Sea and the Western Indian Ocean, but globally also, uh, is India willing to really reconsider its policy of having bases abroad? And under those circumstances, if it's willing to reconsider that policy, then how uh, really uh, is the situation with regard to what we had in the works, Que Mauritius and uh, Que Seychelles? Coming to the specific aspects of this bill, uh, between 2016 and uh, 2020, given that there have been 900 incidents of piracy globally, and India has about 10%, jo log hai, uh, jo is uh, merchant activity mein bhaag lete hai, wo bhartiya mool ke hai, uh, crewman or officer. Aur pishle uh, paanch saat varish mein, paanch sao se zyada bhartiyo ko uh, pirates dobara bandhi banaya gaya hai. Aur is uh, sandharv mein, ye jo kanun sarkar leke aai hai, iski zarurat to thi, aur hai, par iske kuch anch hai, जिसके ऊपर मैं आ, सरकार का ध्यान आकर्षित करना चाहता हूं आ, अगर मैंने माननीय मंत्री जी को सही सुना तो उन्होंने यह कहा कि जो स्थाई समिति ने सिफारिशें की थी कुछ अंशों के ऊपर उनको उन्होंने संज्ञान में लेकर उसमें तब्दीली करने की कोशिश की है बट आई वुड स्टिल लाइक टू पॉइंट आउट सर्टेन एंबिग्विटीज व्हिच कंटिन्यू टू एग्जिस्ट इन द लॉ एंड व्हिच नीड टू बी फर्दर रिफाइंड व्हिच नीड टू बी uh, fleshed out or sharpened because they are going to become an impediment with regard to international cooperation, which is the sine qua non of our entire anti-piracy uh, effort. Now, if you were to, uh, Mr. Chairperson, sir, direct your attention specifically to Clause 3, which says that whosoever commits any act of piracy shall be punished with imprisonment for life or with the death if such person in committing the act of piracy causes death or an attempt thereof. Now there is a inherent contradiction and an inherent ambiguity in this clause. And let me point it out why I'm saying so. <clears throat> the Indian jurisprudence in the Supreme Court has been extremely uh, conservative when it comes to handing out death penalty. And uh, they have repeatedly retreated and stressed that only in the rarest of rare cases, uh, death penalty should be given. I can understand the government's uh, intent to try and deal with piracy with a, with a firm hand, but even Indian law does not permit a death sentence or does not contemplate a death sentence where an attempt has been made which might result in causing death. Mm. You see, under the Indian Penal Code, attempt to murder, which is section 307 of the Indian Penal Code, is not punishable by death. So thereof, therefore, 
Is the government trying to create new jurisprudence through this law, which then can be extrapolated to other criminal laws, whereby you are proposing that uh, even the offense of attempting to commit murder and the statistics on people getting acquitted insofar as Section 307 of the Indian Penal Court is concerned is very, very high. I would seriously urge you that I think either it is a drafting error or it is an inadvertent uh, slip, but this needs to be corrected. I don't think uh, a law, and even in terms of uh, soliciting international cooperation on the question of piracy, if you have a law which punishes an attempt which, ha uh, which has been made in the course of a piracy on somebody's life as punishable with deaths, that is not going to really bring the kind of cooperation which uh, uh, you would perhaps look for while operationalizing this law. Similarly, if I were to come to Clause 4 in the bill, now may I, Mr. Chairperson, sir, just read it out. Whosoever attempts to commit the offense of piracy or aids or abets or counsels or procures for the commission of such an offense shall be punishable with imprisonment for a term which may extend to 14 years and shall also be liable to fine. Now, Mr. Chairperson, you are a lawyer yourself. We have another eminent lawyer sitting right there who is the uh, Minister of State for External Affairs. Now, I can understand the word aid, I can understand the word abet, but counsels, how can you counsel an act of piracy? I have not been able to wrap my head around the word counsel. That, you know, well, if somebody, you know, aids in an act of piracy, he abets an act of piracy, uh, he procures uh, equipment which then is uh, used in operationalizing that act of piracy, whether it is a boat or it is weapons, it is ammunition, etc. It's understandable, but counsels an act of piracy, uh, you know, I, I, I think there needs to be an explanation from the government as to uh, the minister wants to say something. Sir, I just want to clarify, possibly the member is reading from the earlier uh, earlier version of the bill, because in the official amendment which we have moved, the word council is replaced by conspire. So I just want to okay. point it out. I, I think there is possibly right. some, uh, some misunderstanding. Here. I think uh, possibly the uh, revised version with the amendments has not been circulated, because when our office last checked, this was the only version of the bill, Mr. Chairperson, which were, was at least available to the members. Uh, you may have moved the amendment separately. No, no. So far, not moved, and it has not been circulated. Yes. It's not to our knowledge. How, how we are able to discuss? Honorable Minister, please check whether it has been circulated or not. It has been circulated. No. Where? Where? It has been circulated. No, 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 no. It has been circulated. It has been and passing in the last session. <coughs> and at that time, it could not reach, and it was circulated. All the official amendments have been circulated to, uh, at least to all the, if I have received it, then you must have asked. Well, Mr. Received. Chairperson, you then I think, uh, uh, I, I think with, you know, great respect to Mr. P.P. Choudhury, there seems to be some special treatment for the Treasury benches. <laughs> but insofar no, as Minister the opposition says, benches are concerned, <laughs> but insofar as the opposition Min benches are Min concerned, Minister when I checked today in the house. morning, you know, the official amendments were at least not available to us. Uh, Honorable uh, Speaker, sir, my understanding is it was circulated on the 6th of December. December. However, it is corrected now. However, it is corrected now. The, wait, 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 wait. Honorable Minister, the only thing is, now Minister is... No, no, no. Brain, brain, one minute, one minute. Your point is, notwithstanding the correction made in this house, whether the due process has been taken or not. That is the question. Yes, Mr. He is the chairman of the standing committee, unfortunately misleading the house. All the notices of amendments which were given during the last session will lapse on the day in which the house is withdrawn. So that amendments won't, won't, won't give any effect.
the amendments have to be given in this session after issuance of the summons by the president of yes, india please minister, minister that is our point 6th of december right. no, no no minister minister is categorical that it has been circulated and cyst itself you want to reiterate it please uh, uh, chairman sir uh, the official amendments were circulated on 6th of december so it is what had happened was i don't the portal, uh, how the members who are coming on 6th or 7th the 7th the bill is being created for discussion how we are able to go through the amendments and have a power for this issue it's very unfortunate at least circulate among the members at least the amendments may be circulated among the members the hard copy okay my point is not that no, we will we will we'll, we'll, we'll direct minister no no mr chairperson i think uh, no mr I think Mr. that I think that we come to end that no, it has been no, no. circulated. No, no. The time is the no, crux. It's time is the crux. Such a delay should not be happen in future, please. No, Mr. Chairperson, please, I don't. Think, we can continue the debate. No, no Mr. Chairperson, I, I, Mr. Chairperson, I don't think the delay is the crux. What Mr. Premachandran was trying to say, and I would like to reiterate, the fact is that if uh, amendments are circulated on 6th of December 2022. and the discussion is taking place on the 7th of december 20, uh, 22 it is not a pro forma circulation which is important that we've put it on the portal and we've done our job i i i think it is also a question of propriety if you are discussing a bill on the very next day you should at least circulate the official amendments to the members because not everybody goes on the portal every day to check as to what government has uh, put on the portal and what has not been put on the portal so therefore going back to uh what i was saying so if uh, if uh, the government uh, or if the minister has clarified that the word councils has been replaced by the word conspired then uh, well that uh, makes it a full provision let me come to my next point uh, uh mr chairperson now clause 9 and the proviso to it says that uh, provided where such offence is committed on board a foreign flag ship such court which is a designated court shall not have the jurisdiction to try such an offence unless the law enforcement agency or the public authority of the port or place where the ship is located has been requested to intervene by the concerned state whose flag the ship is entitled to fly or by the owner of the ship or its master or any other person on board the ship now this has very profound implications for example mr chairperson if there is a ship on high seas on which an attempt of piracy has been made and there are indian crewmen or indian officers on board that ship and there are unfortunate casualties and therefore it is the indian coast guard or the indian navy which responds to it and uh, takes them into custody is the government trying to say just because the ship is flying a foreign flag irrespective of the fact that indian nationals may have been involved in uh, or may have been hurt in the process the government or the designated court will not have the authority to try that particular offense i think there is a clarity required because if there are indian nationals and we are actually enacting a law or or putting in place a legal architecture with regard to piracy so therefore it should extend to every ship which possibly has indian crewmen or indian officers on board my final point uh, mr chairperson and i think which is important is on the question of presumption this law shifts the burden of proof and actually turns the principle of jurisprudence on its head that uh, you are innocent until proven guilty now this is not the only law which does it even the prevention of Cor corruption act uh, has that uh, or shifts the burden of proof however my concern is that when you are talking about piracy you are intimacy also implicitly talking about a cooperation with other countries now if you have a law where the presumption of uh, guilt or the burden of proof has actually been shifted to the accused or the accused and the accused has to be extradited from a third country that third country is not going to extradite an accused 
who's already proven to be guilty till the time he doesn't prove himself to be innocent. This is actually going to become detrimental to your larger international cooperation in order to combat piracy rather than being an enabler. I would request the minister to really reconsider this, uh, this uh, particular clause in the light of its practical implic uh, implications when it comes to implementing it. Finally, Mr. Chairperson, I would just like to uh, conclude by saying that uh, <coughs> this, uh, this particular bill, when you look at it in its entirety, uh, is a bill which uh, India requires. But yes, there are certain specific <laughs> issues which I have uh, flagged, and there are a couple of more, uh, since we are running out of time, which require the reconsideration of the government because, as I earlier said, they are going to become a problem when the operationalization of this bill takes place. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sri P.B. Chaudhary.